the last episode, we began the restoration process on this tiny abandoned off-grid cabin. We started by cleaning up the yard, removing the roof panels, and pulling out the interior walls, stripping the cabin down completely to its frame. In today's episode, we're finally going to start building it back out. Going from this, to this. Welcome back to Mountain Playground. There's a lot to do, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is put a roof on this thing to keep the rain out. I'm pretty far from a roofer, but I know the basic anatomy of a roof goes rafters, decking, underlayment, and shingles, plus some miscellaneous little pieces here and there, just for fun. So first off, I'll start removing these boards that the old roof panels were attached to so that I can put the sheet wood down instead. This took longer than expected. But this next part of the process is super fun and easy. You just cut the wood down to the size you need, then nail it in place. Most modern construction is done with nail guns and screws, but I don't have a nail gun, so I'll be going slow. But pounding nails in by hand is actually kind of fun and satisfying, so I don't mind. For the wood sheeting, I'm using Orient Strand Board, or OSB, which is basically like plywood, just way cheaper. It's only like $13 per sheet, and I actually got all of mine for 70% off. Apparently it had a little bit of moisture at the store, but it seems totally fine to me, so I was psyched to get it for so much off. Things like this are one of those little victories that you just take for yourself, even if your friends in the group chat don't care about your good deal. Okay, now that we're finished with the decking, we can move on to the underlayment, which is this roll of plastic stuff that helps keep the water out. Normally, you would want to put a water and ice shield underneath the underlayment, but I think that this roof is steep enough that it won't actually need that. I'm not totally sure that's how it works, but I think maybe that's how it works. How about this? Whenever you see me do something wrong, you can leave a comment telling me exactly how I did it wrong and how you would do it way better. Sound good? Either way, this isn't a tutorial, so just don't do it the way I'm doing it, okay? Cool. Placing the underlayment was kind of tricky by myself at first, but luckily my friend Dylan was able to come by and give me a hand with it. Between the two of us, we got it done pretty quickly, so thanks for the help. But this was the point where I came across a roadblock. Remember those green panels I took off in the previous episode? Most of them were still in pretty good condition, so I was planning on putting them back up after I put in the new decking and underlayment. But when I went to purchase a few replacement panels and the special nails that go with them, everything was out of stock and they wouldn't be available for at least a month. I really can't afford to wait an entire month to finish this roof, so after considering my options, I decided to ditch the panels altogether and just go with entirely new shingles instead. This decision is making me really nervous because it's gonna cost a lot more money and I'm not even sure that the shingles are going to look good. But the clock was ticking, so I bought the shingles and got to work. Home Depot didn't have any green shingles in stock, so I bought these nickel gray ones. They kind of had this blue tint to them, which doesn't really match the rest of the color scheme, but we can deal with that later. This time I got some of my family to come by to help, and we started the slow process of nailing in the shingles by hand. This is another task that is typically done with a nail gun, and an experienced roofer could probably knock out this entire roof in just a couple of hours. But for us, it took two full days. By the time I was finished with the final row of shingles, I was feeling pretty fried. 
but I was actually really happy with how everything was turning out, so I think it was worth it. I didn't film myself finishing off the final part of the roof, which is this ridge cap here, because I was kind of rushing to beat the rain, but here's what this looks like. I kind of botched it a little bit. You can see there are a lot of exposed nails, which isn't great, but I'll throw some tar up over those and it'll be fine. And yeah, with that, the roof is finished. In total, I spent about $600 on it, which is a bit more than I was hoping to, but I'm happy knowing that there is something solid over my head. After the last episode, I had a lot of people tell me that I needed a window. I was originally just planning on living out my life in total darkness like a bat, but after all the pressure I got, I finally caved, so here's me framing the back wall for a window. There's not a lot of space, obviously, so I need something that's pretty narrow, but at the same time, I want something that's big enough to let in a lot of light and airflow. I was struggling for a while to find something that was a good fit, but then I had a revelation. I could just buy a basement window and then turn it sideways. For the walls, I'm using these pre-painted T111 boards. They're a super convenient all-in-one exterior wall option, but they're kind of pricey. I bought two for $40 a piece. I think the color that they come in matches well enough with the shingles, so I'm actually going to leave them how they are and then I'll paint the front of the cabin to match later. Remember those boards I pulled off the roof earlier? They're still in pretty good shape, so I'm going to reuse them now as the trim for the window. For the accent color, I chose this dark bluish gray color because I think it goes well with the shingles. This paint is really thick and goopy, which is how you know it's going to do a good job of weatherproofing. Now that the trim is done, all that's left to do is paint the exposed wood. I've had a lot of people ask me how I know how to do all of this, which is a fair question. The truth is that before I started this project, I didn't know how to do any of this. I think it takes a really long time to become an expert at any of this stuff, but if you're just working on a small project for yourself that's pretty low consequence, it's actually not that hard to do an okay job. You can search YouTube for stuff like how to build a cabin, how to install a window, how to shingle a roof, or how to use a hammer, and you'll find dozens of videos from actual experts that break it down really easily. And that's all I did. And yeah, I made dozens of mistakes along the way, but with everyone, I also learned a fun little lesson. And just by giving it a shot and doing my best, I went from this to this. It's taken me a long time, but I'm really excited with how it's coming along. In the next episode, we'll finally get to start working on the inside, which is where the fun definitely begins. If you want to follow along and see the rest of the journey, then definitely subscribe. But that's going to do it for us. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.